What's up guys, Meredith with ExtremeTerrain.com and today we are checking out the Red Rock HD Modular Grill Guard with the LED fog lights. Now if you're happy with your front bumper that came on your Bronco, you just wish there was a bit more coverage for the front end, a grill guard is going to be your best bet and this option by Red Rock will do just that while offering some more bonuses in the meantime. Now while this will require less hassle than replacing your front bumper while still getting some of the benefits of one, this will also be a more affordable alternative making it a great compromise. Now this one in particular will offer a lot of coverage which is, which is great uh, when you're taking your Bronco off road at any point even if it's just a dirt road and it will offer some additional lighting for better visibility if you want an extra boost at night. Now, like I mentioned, this will offer a lot of coverage to the front end with the upper portion of the grill guard uh, spanning the width of the grill while also giving you some great protection to the headlights and the plastic components behind the grill. Uh, now, the headlight guards are going to come separate, so it does come with a modular design, and that kind of gives you some flexibility on how you want to run the guard while also giving you the flexibility of taking them off if you have some maintenance behind the grill guard itself. Now, the lower bar will also be beneficial for some underbody protection so if you do get yourself into some uneven terrain or some larger obstacles this is going to keep you protected against it. Now the other big benefit here is that lighting that's right in the center with two three inch cube lights and in between those a 20 inch LED light bar. Now those will offer a very bright and clear beam pattern for notable visibility which will be great if you either don't have fog lights or again you want that extra lighting for dark roads at night and those dark trails. Now this will be made with a tubular steel construction with a durable black powder coat finish on top for a heavy duty look while also protecting the steel underneath. Now I do want to note too that even though the headlight guards will be removable, the center bars here are going to be welded with solid welds for optimal strength so you can trust that this guard is going to protect your front end very well. Now the lighting will be on the same spectrum with their strength which is essential especially with their positioning. Now those are going to have an aluminum of housing for good durability and heat dispersion, a clear polycarbonate lens on the front with the ability to take any hits against pickup or whatever else, and also uh, a water and dust proof IP67 rating which is helpful for the trail and of course those larger puddles on the street. Now this guard will come in at about $650 which is fairly average for a mod like this. Now this does have the one up over other options thanks to the lighting which not all others come with in addition to offering that lower protection. Now you will see front bumper add-ons that will cover your grill but I like that this will offer the larger vertical uprights on the front that will give you that outward protection and the underbody protection adding a little bit more to the protectiveness of this grill guard. Now I think if you want that middle ground of solid coverage for the front for no matter what you're doing but you don't necessarily want to completely break the bank, then this is going to be a great option. Now this will be bolt on with no modification required, so I am going to give this a one out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter, and it should take you about two hours to get the job done. Now, I do recommend having an extra set of hands on deck because this is pretty big, um, but we will show you that process step by step on our Bronco, so that's going to wrap it up for me. Let's go ahead and get into the install. The tools you'll need for this project are an impact gun, a 3 8 drive ratchet, a drill, a cutting tool, a pair of side snips, a utility knife, a drill bit of your size, a quarter inch ratchet, a 10, a 13, and an 18 millimeter wrench, a four millimeter and a five millimeter Allen wrench, a 10, a 13, a 15, and a 19 millimeter socket, a panel removal tool, a marking device, and a hook tool. Hi everyone. Today we're installing a grill guard on our Bronco, so let's get started. All right, first thing we need to do, if you have a steel bumper or if you have an upper loop here on your bumper, you need to remove that first. We don't have that, so we're not gonna show you how to do that. Next thing to do is remove these plastic covers that surround your tow hook. To do that, we're gonna use our trim removal tool, and we've got four push pins, two down here on the bottom, and then two up here in the top next to the tow ring. So we're just gonna use our trim removal tool, pop these out, remove them, and then get the covers out of the way. We'll insert our tool, pull it out, 
and that removes our retaining clip. And we'll get the two next to the toe ring. And with those out of the way, just pull our cover off. Now you can do the same thing for the other side. All right, next thing we're gonna do is remove these two inner bolts here next to our toe ring, making sure, of course, not to touch the one on the outside. So we're just gonna take these two here out using our 15 millimeter socket. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install these spacers that are provided in the kit using these foam pads with double-sided tape on the back side and the front side. So what we're gonna do is match these up so that the holes line up correctly. And then we're gonna stick it in these openings here on the D-ring mount. So we remove the backing on one side and they do form match to the actual spacers. So we'll go ahead and put that on, making sure that the openings are lined up. And then we'll go ahead and remove the backing on the other side. Now, once you've got the backing removed, we'll go ahead and stick these into place. And you'll notice that we do have rounded corners and we have angled corners. The rounded corners will fit in the pockets of the D-ring. So we'll go ahead and put that into place and do the same thing for the other one. Then we'll go ahead and put that one into place. Next thing we're gonna do is install our mounting bracket for the grill guard. Now these are marked, they're all stamped with either a P or a D so you'll know which side it goes on. So P is obviously gonna be for the passenger side. So we'll go ahead and get this installed using the original hardware. And when we install this, you'll notice we've got a short side here and a long side. The short side is what's gonna be mounted to the D-ring here. So we'll insert our original hardware. And once we've got them in, we'll go ahead and snug these up. We're not gonna tighten them up all the way, just snug them up to hold them in place. So like I said, we're not gonna tighten them all the way up just yet, just snug them up to hold them in place. Now we can go ahead and do this whole process for the other side. Next thing we're gonna do is we have to modify the plastic covers that we took off of the tow hooks earlier in order to fit around this bracket. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is slide it over the bracket like so. And as you can see, it's not going to clear because of the slides on this plastic cover here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our marker and we're gonna mark at the top of this bracket and at the bottom of this bracket. And once we've got that marked, what we can do is use some sort of a, a cutting tool, either you know, like a, a, a sawzall or a jigsaw, cutoff wheel, something like that. And we're gonna cut along this space here where we marked it to open that up. And you're gonna cut all the way to the outside edge here. So once you've got it marked as far as the width of that bracket that we have to cut around, what you're gonna do is take some sort of a cutting device jigsaw, cutoff wheel, whatever you have handy. Um, and you're gonna cut the width of that bracket that we've just marked from the inside edge all the way to the outside edge. Now it probably will take some trial and error to make sure that you get the cut all the way through to the right spot. But then we're gonna go ahead and just cut that off and get rid of that so that we can slide this all the way back into position so we can reattach it. Now we're gonna go ahead and use a, a cutoff wheel here to cut our plastic. We've already got our marks here as far as the width goes. 
So now we're just gonna cut all the way up to the edge right here and see how that fits. And then we'll play with it from there and fine tune it. Now we'll go ahead and clean up the edge a little bit. Now we'll go ahead and test fit it and see how it fits. All right, so after we've got it all cut and we did some fine tuning, this is basically what it should look like. You've got a gap here to go around the plate support panel, and then you've got a little bit cut out on the front side of it to clear the rest of the bracket. Now, once you've got this done and all cleaned up, use a little sandpaper or a small file to sand off the rough edges. Then you can go ahead and do the same thing for the opposite side. All right, now that we've got our front covers fixed up and ready to go, now it's time to start installing some of our brackets. So the first thing we're gonna do is pop the hood and then remove the radiator cover so we can install a couple of the brackets from inside. All right, so now that we've got our hood open, the next thing we're gonna do is remove this radiator cover here. And to do that, we're gonna use our trim removal tool and use pop out these nine push pins that are holding it in place. So let's go ahead and get that started. Now, once you've got these push pins out, it's a good idea to just go ahead and lift this air inlet up and get that out of the way. That way, this cover just lifts right out. Now, our next step is gonna to be to install a couple of upper brackets to support the grill guard itself, and they get bolted to the top of the radiator core support. Now, depending on the type of bumper that you have on your vehicle, will determine which of these brackets that you actually use. Now, because we've got a steel bumper on our Bronco, we're going to be using the longer bracket. Now, there was a shorter one as well that looks very similar to this for the plastic covered bumpers. Now, with these bolting to the top of the core support, they also extend out through the front of the grill. So, we have found that in order to get these installed safely and efficiently, you're gonna to need to remove your grill. So there's four bolts at the top of this grill here, 10 millimeter bolts, and it's all you gotta do, and you can pull the, the grill itself out. Then you can slip this in through the opening in the grill, and then we'll attach it to the top of the core support. Now, the next thing is, on our particular vehicle, on the passenger side of the grill, there is a black plastic cover that goes along the back of the grill. Obviously with that cover in place, we're not gonna be able to put our bracket through. So we're gonna to have to cut a hole in that plastic panel in order to get our bracket through. So we've already taken the, the liberty of marking where the opening in the grill is that we need to drill and cut out for this bracket to fit in. So in our case, it's on the second row fourth one from the left as you're looking at it. So we're gonna, we're gonna mark this with a drill bit to, so that we know from the back side exactly where that hole needs to be cut. So let's go ahead and get our grill taken out. Now in our vehicle, the camera and the washer for the camera are connected to the grill as well. And we've got a couple of disconnect points right here on the passenger side. So we're just gonna push down on the release lever for the electrical connection and pull that out. And then for the washer hose, we're just gonna squeeze the two sides and pull that out of the hose. Now with that done, we can go ahead and remove our four bolts and pull our grill out.
Now to remove the grill, all we have to do is grab a hold of it and pull it straight out. Now with our grill out, I wanted to show you what this black plastic panel looks like on the back side. As you can see, we've got our, our camera here and our washer hose here, and there's a panel that runs across the passenger side. This is the panel that we're going to be having to cut a hole into. So we'll go ahead and flip our grill over. We've already got the position marked where we need to cut it out. So we'll go ahead and drill a couple of holes from the front side so that we can see on the back exactly where we have to cut. Now you wanna be careful with this drill bit so that you don't damage the outer edge of the grill itself. So we'll just drill a couple of holes in the corners. All right, now we can see exactly where we need to cut that spot out. All right, now we're gonna use our cutoff wheel to, to cut out this plastic panel here. All right, now we're gonna use a pair of side cutters to go ahead and clip these ends here since we can't get our wheel in there. And there we've got our piece cut out. Now we can go ahead and clean up the edges of this with a small file just to make it look nicer. All right, so we've got our hole cut out in the back here. Got it cleaned up. And as you can see, you can now see through the grill where we cut it out. Now we can go ahead and install this and install our new brackets and get this thing put together. All right, so now we're ready to install our brackets on the driver's side and the passenger side to our core support. Now the Clearances are pretty tight in here, so we're gonna have to get a little creative in how we get this attached. So the kit comes with a six millimeter bolt with the washers already attached and an Allen head top, and it comes with these flange nuts. So getting the flange nuts underneath is a little tight. So what we're gonna do is use a piece of tape Attach it to the bottom of the nut, like so. And then we'll use our utility knife to cut out the hole in the center of the nut. All right, once we've got a hole in the center of our tape, we'll go ahead and just tape this to our finger put our bolt through the bracket, and we're gonna put it into this hole that's already pre-drilled in the core support right next to the oval hole. Once we've got that in place, put our nut on the bottom of the hole, and then we'll go ahead and get our bolt threaded into the nut. Then we can remove the tape, and everything is secure. Now we'll do the same thing for the passenger side and we're not gonna tighten it down, but when we do get ready to tighten it down after we install our grill guard, we'll be using a four millimeter Allen wrench to go ahead and tighten up these bolts. Now we can reinstall our grill, including the brackets through the grill, making sure of course that we keep our windshield, our camera washer hose out of the way. And we'll re-secure our grill using the original hardware. And we'll tighten them down with our 10 millimeter socket.
Now we'll go ahead and connect our washer hose and our camera connector. And now we'll move on to the next step. All right, so we're gonna insert our bolt with a flat washer through one of the holes. We'll start with the center hole and we'll put a flat washer on the other side and then one of our nylock nuts. We'll do the same thing for the other two holes. And then we can use the supplied five millimeter Allen wrench and a 13 millimeter wrench to tighten everything up. Now we'll tighten up the other two as well. And now you can follow that process for the other side as well. Now we can go ahead and install our light brackets for our 20 inch light bar. And we're gonna attach those to the center section here and here using an eight millimeter by 24 millimeter long bolt with a lock washer and a flat washer. And then a flat washer and nut on the other side. Now keep in mind that these brackets are side specific and they are marked appropriately for either the driver or passenger side. So just make sure when you're putting them on, you have the correct bracket on the correct side. Now, once you've got the driver's side done, you can go ahead and repeat that process for the passenger side. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and install our light bar. We're gonna slide that in between our two brackets that we just installed and then using two eight millimeter by 16 millimeter bolts with lock washers and flat washers, and we'll secure the light to the brackets. Do the same thing for the other end. Now we'll go ahead and snug those up with our 13 millimeter sock ratchet. Now let's get our fog lights installed. All right, now we're gonna go to assemble the bracket onto our fog lights. And to do that, you'll notice that this bracket is actually leaning forward or backwards, depending on how you wanna look at it. But when we put this into our grill guard, we want it to be facing forward. So we're gonna put this into the bottom of the light here, like so, with the angle facing forward. Then we'll take one of the supplied screws and lock washers, insert that into the light side. So we'll put our, our bolt with our lock washer through the side of the light, through the hole in the bracket to make sure that it's secured, and then go ahead and just snug it up. And then we'll do the same thing for the other side. Snug it up with the supplied wrench. And now we'll go ahead and install the light onto the bracket. So on the bottom of this light bracket, there are a couple of small rails in there. Those are designed to hold the nut in place when we go to install this on the grill guard. So we'll just go ahead and slip the nut inside, set it down into place, Use the attached bolt with lock washer and flat washer and secure the nut. Now we're just gonna put this in finger tight right now so that when we go to actually install the grill guard on the vehicle, we can align the lights at that point. Now you can go ahead and repeat that process for the passenger side. All right, now that we've got our grill guard assembled, if you've got an extra pair of hands, it'd be great to help put this on. 
and you'll attach it using the two M12 bolts on each side with the flat washers on both sides and the nut. All right, now that we've got our grill guard loosely installed here, go ahead and center it up, make sure that it's where you want it to be. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and tighten down these lower mounting bolts here so that we know it's gonna stay in place. So we'll use our 15 millimeter socket to tighten those up. Now we've got our lower mounting brackets tightened down where we want them to be. Now we'll go ahead and remove our grill guard once more so that we can reinstall the plastic trim pieces here over the tow hooks. And then we'll put our grill guard back on and tighten it down for the final time. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and put our trim pieces back on. So we'll slide this over the mounting brackets here, get everything lined up and reinstall the trim pieces using the original push pins. Now this last one will be a little tight to get in because you've got to go in behind the bracket. So you just reach your fingers up in there and push it in. And then go ahead and lock it into place. And now we can do the same thing for the other side. All right, now we can go ahead and install the two button head bolts on the bottom side of this top bar to the brackets that we installed through the grill earlier. These are supplied in the kit along with the five millimeter wrench to tighten it down. So let's go ahead and get these loosely installed right now. So we'll install the bolt with the lock washer and a flat washer as well. And we'll do the same thing for the driver's side. All right, now you can double check your spacing, make sure that you're at the same width on both sides away from the grill, and go ahead and tighten it down with a supplied wrench. All right, now we can double check our alignment one more time, make sure it's level across the front of the vehicle, make sure it's side to side is correct. And then we can go ahead and tighten down the four main support bolts here, two on this side, two on the other side, using our 19 millimeter socket and an 18 millimeter wrench. All right, now we can double check our alignment, make sure it's even away from the grill, level across the top, and level side to side. Once you've got that done, now we can go ahead and tighten down our four support bolts using our 19 millimeter socket and our 18 millimeter wrench. Now we can go ahead and tighten down the brackets attached to our grill using our four millimeter Allen wrench. Now it is possible that you may have to use a 10 millimeter wrench on the bottom side to hold the nut. If you do, just be careful you don't drop it down in between everything. Now that we've got our grill guard installed, we can go ahead and start wiring up the lights. Now we've got a light bar and two fog lights to hook up as well. So let's go ahead and get started with running our wires and I'll tell you all about it as we're going along as to how we're gonna hook this all up. All right, now both of these light kits the light bar and the fog lights come with their own wiring harness. So the wiring harness for the fog lights has two connectors on it. So we're gonna run one down the driver's side and one down the passenger side. Now these harnesses are plenty long, so you're not gonna have any problems reaching the inside of the cab. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this first one 
right down behind the core support here, down pretty even with this fog light. All right, once you've got it down in there, you will need a, a hook tool to go ahead and pull that out so that we can connect the harness to the light. All right, so we've just got a piece of wire here with a little hook on the end of it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go underneath this trim piece here, just above the bumper, and grab a hold of the wiring harness that we just ran down through there. So now we've got our connector pulled through. We've got our connector on the light. So we're just gonna plug those two in till it snaps into place and locks. And then we can feed this wire and connector back through underneath the trim piece, leaving a little bit of slack just so that it's not causing any tension. Now we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the driver's side. So we've got our harness run down behind the core support here. We'll go ahead and connect it on the driver's side so it snaps into place. And then feed it back through underneath the trim panel. Same way as we did for the passenger side. All right, now that we've got our lights connected to the harness itself, let's go ahead and start zip tying this up to make sure everything stays secure. So we're just gonna go through this hole here on the end of the core support on the driver, on the passenger side, feed the zip tie through, wrap it around the wiring harness for the light, and we'll just zip tie that in place. That way it stays out of the way. It's not interfering with anything and it keeps everything nice and secure. All right, now we're gonna put another one here right next to the hood latch. All right, now we're ready to run our light switch inside the cab. One of the easiest ways I've found to be able to do this is through the firewall right beside the master cylinder for the brakes. Now, there's a big grommet in there that's got one set of wires going through it. There's plenty of space. One suggestion that you can use to actually get this put in there is use a utility knife or a razor blade and cut a slice in the grommet. It's that big. Uh, and then you can feed this through and then you can feed the switch through for the other light as well. Uh, but since we're not making this a permanent addition to our vehicle, we're not actually going to slice the grommet. We're just gonna push it out of the way and feed these through into the cabin. Now, if you do decide that you're gonna slice the grommet open, then you might wanna consider getting some clear silicone or some liquid rubber to go ahead and seal that back up after you get everything installed. So let's go ahead and get this put into the cabin. All right, so because of everything that's in the engine compartment, it's a little difficult to actually get a good picture of the grommet, but it's right here on the side of the master cylinder booster. So like I said, because we're not making this permanent to our vehicle, we're not going to actually cut the grommet. We're just gonna push it out of the way and we'll feed our switch in through the side. All right, now let's go ahead and get inside and we'll go ahead and mount our light switch and then we'll come back and wrap up all of our wiring. Now, once you've got your switch pushed through the firewall grommet, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and grab that and pull it on through and make sure you give yourself enough room to be able to mount the switch wherever it is that you decide you wanna mount it. There's plenty of cable there, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, it is gonna be a little difficult to get the camera in here because it's under the dash, but we'll do our best to give you an idea exactly what we're dealing with. All right, so I've got our switch here and I've pulled it through the firewall. And what we've decided to do is we're gonna run it up behind this trim panel here at the bottom of the dash, underneath the steering column, and then we're just gonna mount it to the trim panel here. That way you'll have easy access to it when you need to turn them on. Now, one thing you do wanna be careful of though is when you run this wire through uh, all of your pedals and everything, make sure that it's not anywhere near any of the moving parts or any heat source uh, just to cause any issues. So we'll feed this up behind the dash and we'll pull it through. And like I said, we're just gonna mount it right here where you've had easy access to it, but yet it's still out of the way. All right, so to mount this switch, what you're gonna do is remove the backing material from the back of the switch where the adhesive is at. 
Make sure that your dash is clean. I would advise using some rubbing alcohol to clean it off. And then just go ahead and press it into place. Now we'll go ahead and run the wiring harness for our light bar. And that way we can just tie all the wire together up in the engine compartment here to get them all out of the way when we're done. So we're gonna feed this down behind the core support again, just like we did for the fog lights. Get it down there. And now we'll go ahead and feed that through and connect the light bar. All right, so just like our fog lights, we're gonna use our, our little hook tool, pull the harness back underneath the trim panel, and then go ahead and hook up our light bar to the harness. Snap it into place, and then feed the cable back through. Now we'll go ahead and zip tie all three of our wiring harnesses together here right at the top of the core support. And now let's go ahead and run our other switch. All right, and just like before, we're gonna run this through the grommet in our firewall next to our brake cylinder. And of course, nothing has changed since the last time, so it's a little tough to get the camera in here to see it. And just like before, pull our switch through, make sure we've got plenty of room and run it up behind our dash and we'll put it next to the first one that we installed. Now we'll remove the backing off of our switch and we'll apply it right next to the other one. And we'll stick it right next to the original one. All right, now we're gonna start zip tying all of our harnesses together, getting them tucked out of the way so that they're not causing any interference or any problems later on. And then once we get them all wrapped up, we'll go ahead and connect them to the battery and provide power to our lights. So we're just gonna zip tie this, all three harnesses together and connect them around the hood latch release cable. We're gonna run them all the way back behind the fuse box here. That way we can roll them all up, stick them down there and still have room to reach our battery. All right, now we're gonna start wrapping our, roll, our harnesses up together. Go ahead and run a zip tie around these. That way they're not just floating around the engine bay. All right, and for now, we're just gonna tuck them down here behind the fuse box. Now, since we are running two different harnesses, we're gonna have two different power supplies and two different grounds. So we're, gonna, we're just gonna connect them together at the same time and get everything done. Now we're gonna connect the red power cords to the positive side of the battery and the black to the negative. So let's go ahead and get that done. All right, so we're gonna connect our red power cords to our studs on our battery. As you can tell, we've got several different options here. We're gonna use one that is completely empty, put our power cords over them, and then you're gonna to have to source an M6 by 1.0 nut to secure it to the battery. And then we'll tighten that nut down with a 10 millimeter socket. And now we'll connect our black, two black wires to the negative side of the battery. Again, using our 10 millimeter socket, we'll remove this nut all right, so we'll put our two negative wires over the negative stud on the battery, replace the nut, and tighten it down with our 10 millimeter socket. And now we'll go ahead and wrap up the two wires for our switches and zip tie them together.
And now we'll just tuck everything down back behind the fuse box here. And you can, if you choose to, you can go ahead and find a place to mount the relays. Like I said, since we're not doing this permanently to our vehicle, we're not gonna mount them anywhere on the fender or in the vehicle. So we'll just tuck everything down out of the way. And now you can go through and cut off all the excess zip tie material and your installation is complete. All right, now that we've got everything installed, we've got all of our excess zip tie material cut off. Now we'll go ahead and install our radiator cover. And we'll secure it using the original push pins. And with the radiator cover installed, finally, we'll reinstall the inlet to our air box and secure it with the push pin as well. And that wraps up our review and install of the Red Rock HD modular grill guard with LED fog lights and 20 inch LED light bar in black for your 21 to 23 Bronco excluding Raptor. Thanks for watching and remember, for all things Bronco, keep it right here at extremeterrain.com. <laughs>